Excuse me. As you will see in a moment. Why Turkish? Turkish? What do you mean? I got him in Oxford Street. No, 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 not your boots. I'm in the bar. Oh. Why the relaxing and expensive Turkish rather than the invigorating homemade art? Well, for the simple reason, Holmes, that for the past few days I've been feeling rheumatically and old. Oh. It makes me think you need a change. Let me suggest that you take one. Hmm? How would Lausanne do? Oh, Lausanne. First class tickets and all expenses paid on a princely scale. Well, splendid. But what's it all about, Holmes? One of the most vulnerable classes in this world is the drifting and friendless woman. She's a stray chicken in a world of foxes, Watson. And I very much fear that some evil has come to the Lady Frances Carthay. Ah, no, so now we descend from the general to the particular. Who is the lady? Lady Frances is the sole survivor of the direct family of the late Earl of Rufton. The estates went in the mail line. She was left with limited means, but with some very remarkable old Spanish jewellery, silver and strangely cut diamonds. She was rather too fondly attached to them, refused to leave them in the bank and always carried them about with her. So what's happened to her? All I can tell you is that for four years it's been her invariable custom to write every second week to her old governess, Miss Dobney, who lives in Camberwell. Mm. It's Miss Dobney who's consulted me. Nearly five weeks have passed without a word. The last letter was from the Hotel National at Lausanne. Ah, Lausanne. Lady Frances seems to have left there and given no address. It's our task to clear the matter up. Is Miss Dobney the only source of information, then? I, I mean, surely she had other correspondents. There's one correspondent who's a sure draw, Watson. A bank. Single ladies' passbooks are compressed diaries. The last check but one paid her bill at Lausanne, but it was a big one. It probably left her with cash in hand. The last but one, you say? Yes. The only check drawn since was to a Miss Mary Devine. It was cashed at the Credit Lyonnais less than three weeks ago. The sum was fifty pounds. You know who uh, Miss Marie Devine is? Yes. Lady Frances Carfax is maid. Oh? Why she should have paid for this check, we've not yet determined. No doubt your researches will soon clear that up. My researches? Yes. Hence the health-giving expedition to Lausanne. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> You'll go then? Of course. Splendid. And if my humble counsel can ever be valued at so extravagant a rate as tuppence a word, it waits your disposal night and day at the end of the company. Yes, but certainly, Monsieur Watson. My lady Carfax was very much liked by all my staff. A charming lady, Monsieur. And her maid, um, uh, Miss Devine. Also charming. In fact, she happens to be engaged to one of my waiters. She will be back. Oh, that's a stroke of luck, then. Uh, could I have a word with him, do you think? Certainly, certainly. I will get him for you at once. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, uh, mercy, mercy, beaucoup. No, Monsieur Watson, I just cannot comprehend. Marie has told her ladyship he's very happy in Lausanne. She has no intention to leave. And then suddenly comes the sauvage. Oh, oh sa Savage? Yes, Savage. Oh, oh, what is this, Monsieur Viva? Who was he? That I cannot say. He, he come to visit me, lady, a day or two before she go away. Oh, a Sauvage, Monsieur. Big. And black of the beard. Mm. But my lady will not see him. What nationality did Miss Devine say? Oh, uh, Anglais. Oh, English? Yes, <laughs> yes Monsieur. And uh, Miss Devine thought this man's arrival had something to do with Lady Frances going away so suddenly? Oh, we both thought so. Well, then, surely you can tell me where Mr. Bean and Lady Carfax are now. Monsieur, my mari has left my lady's employment when my lady went away. She's gone to Montpellier to another situation. I will give you her address. But Lady Carfax has gone to Baden-Baden. Well, 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 then, I must go there, too. Thank you again, monsieur. Um, uh, mercy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Herr Doctor. The Lady Carfax was here for ten days. Have you any idea what she did with her time, Herr Dietrich? Uh, I, I mean, did she um, strike up acquaintance with any other guests here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did she have visitors staying in other parts of Baden? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was uh, Dr. Schlesinger and his wife. 
they have a very good friendship made with the lady Carfax. Dr. Fillinger, yes. A German doctor? Nine, nine, oh nine. Nine, he was from South America. He and his wife there, uh, uh, what, what you call it, uh, missionaries. Uh, missionaries, yes, yes. Ah, yes. uh, uh, danke, danke, yeah. The lady Carfax, you know, is very much religious, so they are become friends very quick. I see. Uh, when he and his wife go back to London, the other lady, she goes with them. When was this? Uh, three weeks ago, uh, Dr. Schlesinger pays the bill for them all. Uh, one more question, Herr Dietrich. Um, uh, has any other person inquired here for Lady Carfax since she left? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. A week ago, an Englishman, uh, very, very... Uh, 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 sauvage? Um, so savage? Savage, mm. exact. With a beard and a face, very fierce. Oh, yeah, savage. Very... And I hope your stay in Montpellier will be most pleasant, Monsieur Watson. Uh, thank you. Uh, before you go, sir, here is a telegram for you from London. It has been waiting for you since yesterday. Oh, thank you very much. Your latest report, capital. A credit to my training. Please wire description of Schlesinger's left ear home. Schlesinger's left ear. Oh, really? Oh, really? I tell you quite true, Dr. Watson. I've only left me lady's service because I will marry soon. Mr. Wien, you were friends when you left Lady Frances? Oh, of course. She gave me 50 pounds for the wedding present. Ah, that explains that. Yes. Um, uh, do you think it's possible your mistress left Lausanne to get away from... Uh, a uh, 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 savage-looking man uh, w w with a beard? Uh, yes, yes, it is true, I know. Milady has nothing said to me, but I can see she is afraid. That... What, what, what's, <gasps> that? What's, what, what's the matter? What's the matter, Mr. Beaton? Oh, Miss Sassano out of the window, see? Hey, where? There, it is he with a beard. Oh, good Lord. Oh. You're sure he's the one? Oh, but yes, yes. Then I suppose he was proposing to pay you a visit. Uh, why would that be? I do not know, monsieur, but... Oh, monsieur, I'm afraid. Oh, don't worry. I'll go out and have a word with him myself. Uh, you stay here. Excuse me. Eh? Uh, may I ask if you're an Englishman, sir? Yes, I am. What about it? May I ask your name? You certainly may not. I, I, I see. Uh, well, well, perhaps then you tell me where I can find the Lady Frances Carfax. Eh? What have you done with her? What? Why have you pursued her? I, I insist upon an answer. Why, you... Oh, <laughs> the teacher! Listen to me. Sorry, you've made a pretty enough hash of things already. Let's get away from this car before some gendarmes get curious. Lead on to your hotel. Quick. I fancy you'd better come back with me to London by the night express. Now, 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 look, look here, Holmes. I cannot at the moment recall any possible blunder which you have omitted. All you've done is to give the alarm everywhere and discover nothing. Oh, perhaps you'd have done better. I have done better. Eh? You'll see in a moment I'm expecting a visitor. In my room. I sent word to him from the reception desk as we came up. Oh, very well. But look here, you, you, you might at least tell me how you came to be near that girl's house, dressed in that road sweeper's get-up, just in time to save me from being grasped. My dear Watson, it's all quite simple. I sensed that things were going not too well with your inquiry. Ah, I fancy that will be our visitor. He's a fellow lodger of yours, as we say, girl. Come in, my dear sir. Oh, thank you. Good Lord. This is the Honourable Philip Green, Watson. Uh, Mr. Green, this is Dr. Watson, my old friend and associate. Oh, but I forgot. You've already 
<laughs> I hope I didn't hurt you, Dr. Watson. Of course, if I'd known. Uh, well, sir, I, I must say, I, I don't understand. Well, when you came up to me like that and started asking questions about Francis, so, oh, so accusingly, I, I admit I just lost my grip. My nerves are like live wires. I see. Oh, all this business is beyond me. Yes, and me. I'd better tell you then, Mr. Green, that I learned of your existence through Miss Dobney, Lady Francis' old governess. Oh, Susan Dobney, with a mob cap. <laughs> I remember her well. And she remembers you. Oh, yes. That was in the days before you found it better to go to South Africa. Oh. I see you know my story then, Mr. Holmes. I do. Very well. I'll hide nothing from you. You see... There was never a young man in this world loved a woman more than I loved Francis. And the trouble was, I'd always been a pretty wild youngster, and when she got to hear of some of my goings-on, she uh, she'd have nothing more to do with me. And yet, here's the remarkable thing. She loved me. And when I came back all these years after, I heard she was unmarried still. Well, I found her at Lausanne. But she's a strong-willed woman still, and she left the town. I've been on a track ever since, but I've completely lost the trail. And when I heard her maid was here in Montpellier, well, naturally, I thought I'd find out what she knew. Naturally. Uh, Dr. Watson, I'm a rough sort of chap in many ways, and I've led a rough life to make my money. <laughs> you forgive me for sitting about you like that? Oh, of course, my dear sir. What is your London address? The Langham Hotel will find me. Then may I recommend that you return there and be on hand in case I should want you. Yes, of course. Splendid. And now, Watson, if you'll pack your bag, I'll cable to Mrs. Hudson to make one of her best efforts for two hungry travellers arriving at 221B Baker Street at 7.30 tomorrow. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. A splendid feast. Yes, indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll be getting along, then. Oh, oh, sir, there's a telegram for you. Huh? Oh. Ah. From Barton, Barton, Watson. Oh, that'll be all, Mrs. Hudson. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Who are you from? From your friend, Herr Dietrich, manager of the English Huff. Here you are. Jaggy or torn? That's all it says, Holmes. Jagged or torn. Oh, what on earth is The it? answer, which for some reason best known to yourself, you failed to supply. A description of Schlesinger's left ear. But I thought you were joking. Luckily, Herr Dietrich didn't. Well, what does it show, then? It shows, my dear Watson, that we're dealing with an exceptionally astute and dangerous man. Really? Who? The Reverend Dr. Schlesinger, missionary from South America, is none other than Holy Peter's. One of the most unscrupulous rascals that ever came out of Australia. His particular speciality is the beguiling of lonely ladies by playing upon their religious feelings. His so-called wife is an English woman named Annie Fraser. She helps him. What made you guess that, Holmes? It was no guess. The nature of Schlesinger's tactics suggested his identity at once. I knew Holy Peters had been badly mauled about the ear in a saloon fight in Adelaide in 89. So this telegram confirms my suspicion. Poor Lady Carfax is in the hands of a most infernal couple, Watson. They'll stick at nothing. Murder? I'm afraid it's more than likely that she's dead already. If not, she's undoubtedly in some sort of captivity. Perhaps she never even reached London with Schlesinger and his, um, well, this, this other woman. Then. Perhaps not. On the other hand, if she is alive, all my instincts tell me they'll have brought her here to London. So, now I suggest that we take the obvious step of strolling down to the yard and asking our friend Lestrade to keep a look out. There is news for you at last. What then? Someone has begun pawning Lady Carfax's jewels. Someone? Who? A large, clean-shaven man of clerical appearance is all the description Scotland Yard have been able to get out of the pawnbroker in the Westminster Road. But the name and address he gave have been found to be false. Then, then what does it mean, Mr. Holmes? Francis, have they... We've no alternative but to prepare for the worst, Mr. Green. Mm. Supposing they have held her prisoner up till now, 
It's clear they can never let her loose again without it leading to their own downfall. Then we must get to her while there's a chance. Isn't there anything I can do? Well, Schlesinger's had a fair price and no questions asked at the pawnbroker. If he needs ready money, he may go there again. If you're willing to wait there on the chance that something might come of it, I can arrange for you to spend the next few days in the shop. I'll do it. If the fellow comes in, follow him home. I'll do more than that. No. What? No indiscretion and, above all, no violence. But... I put you on your honor, Mr. Green, that you'll take no step without my consent. Oh, very well. I promise that. Thank you. Holmes, Dr. Watson, we've got him. Got Schlesinger? Yes, yes, where we want him. Come now, Mr. Green. Let us have the order of events, if you please. It was the woman this time. She came into the shop an hour ago. A tall, pale woman, eyes like a ferret. That's the one. She brought in a pendant. Obviously came from the same set as the other things. The pawnbroker told me. Well, I followed her up the Kennington Road. Then she got a cab and I followed her in another. Excellent. And then? She got down at number 36, Pulteney Square, Brixton. I got out round the corner and went back towards the house. But just then a van came up, and two men went round to the back of it to unload. I saw what it was. Mr. Holmes, it was a coffin. Good Lord. They carried it up to the door of number 36, and the woman let them in with it. I thought for a moment of rushing in, but... Well, I remembered my promise to you and came straight back here. You've done excellent work, Mr. Green. The coffin. Mr. Holmes... Do you think? We'll do all that can be done. Not a moment will be lost, but we can do nothing legal without a warrant. No. And if you want to help further, you'll take this note down to the authorities and get one. There may be some difficulty, but I think the sale of the jewellery should justify it. Very good, Mr. Holmes. As for us, Watson... We must get to Fulton Square as fast as we can. Someone's coming, Holmes. Well? I'd like to speak to Dr. Schlesinger, please. There's no one here of that name. Uh, here! Take your foot out of my door! Well, I want to see the man who lives here, whatever he may call himself. Wait, I... Here I am now, Annie, my dear. There's surely some mistake, gentlemen. We have no time to waste. You are Henry Peters of Adelaide, late the Reverend Dr. Schlesinger of Baden and South America. I am Sherlock Holmes. And what is your business in my house? I want to know what you've done with the Lady Frances Carfax. <laughs> ah, is that it? I'd be very glad if you could tell me where she is. I've a bill against her for nearly a hundred pounds. And nothing to show for it but a couple of trumpery pendants a dealer will hardly look at. Indeed. She attached herself on to Mrs. Peters and me at Baden. And she stuck on to us until London. I paid her bill and a ticket. Once in London, she gave us the slip. Now, you find her, Mr. Holmes, and I'm in your debt. I mean to find her. I'm going through this house till I do find her. Oh? And where's your warrant? This Robaldo will have to serve for that till a better one comes. Aha. Uh -huh. Go and fetch a policeman, Annie. He won't shoot you. Take care, Henry. I won't be a gent. Holmes. Let her go, Watson. It nearly means our time is limited. If you try to stop us, Peters, you'll get hurt. I mean it. You've got the gun. Good. Now, where is that coffin? Coffin? What do you want with the coffin? It's in use. There's a body in it. I must see that body. Well, have it your own way, then. It's in here. And now, let's take a look. Watson! It's someone else. Thank heaven. Blundered for one, haven't you? Who, who is this Peters? Now, since you're so nosy, it's an old nurse of my wife's. Rose Spender, she was called. We found her in Brixton Workhouse Infirmary, and like Christian folk, we brought her here to die. Mind you, take the address of the doctor who's been to see her. It's Dr. Horsum of 13 Furbank Villas. Horsum? Oh, I know him. See? Well, she died after three days. He signed the certificate. Senile decay. Of course, that's only a doctor's opinion. Sherlock Holmes would know better. Anyway, Stimson and Co. the Kennington Road are bearing her late tomorrow morning. Pick any holes in that lot, Mr. Holmes. Just the same, I'm going through your house. Are you, though? This way, officers, if you please. 
Now, these men have forced their way into my house, and I can't get rid of them. Now, uh, then, what's it all about? Here is my card, Sergeant. Hmm. Mr. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, sir? The same. This is my friend, Dr. Watson. Well, of course, sir, we know all about you, sir. But uh, you can't stay here without a warrant, sir. I quite understand that. Arrest them. We know where to lay our hands on this gentleman if he's wanted. Uh, but you have to go, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Watson, we shall have to go. Come along, yeah. my dear fellow. It's nine o'clock already, and we've still a list of old... Inquiries about an old lady, Rose Spender. I gather you might be able to help. Miss Spender? Ah, yes, yes, of course, Mr. Holmes. Yes, and Miss Spender was an inmate of this infirmary until quite recently. Then quite duckily, a lady she used to nurse in the old days came here with her husband. Quite out of the blue, you understand. And they took her away. Wasn't there ten minutes? No room for any foul play of any sort, if that's what you're hinting. No. I wouldn't have signed the certificate now, would I? I'm just going to get up. What time is that funeral to be? Eight, wasn't it? Funeral? Yes. Oh, yes, eight. That's it, yes. Holmes, what on earth's the matter? I heard you prowling about half the night, puffing that stinking... Never mind that now, Watson. The funeral's at eight, and it's now approaching 7.20. I'll never forgive myself if we're late. Never. Now, come on, for heaven's sake. It's life or death, I tell You men. Take it back. Take that coffin back inside the house this instant. Yeah, what the blazes? What the is... devil are you up to? Oh, interfering again, are you? And in a Christian funeral this time? A warrant's on its way, Peter. Sacrilege. That's what it is. Sacrilege. Never mind about that. Come along, please. Well, I don't know. Do as I tell you, man, or you'll be sorry. Yes, Gav. Fred, you heard the jet. To you now. And careful. A sovereign for you if the lid's off in one minute. Lovely. Come on, Fred. Hey, Arthur. Oh. 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 oh, lovers. There's two of them. And the second, if I'm not mistaken, Watson, is the lady for whom we are seeking. Capital, my dear Watson. Splendid work, my dear fellow. Well, it was touch and go, Holmes. Another few minutes. Ah, and... yes. But she's safe now. Ah, oh, completely. She'll be in a hospital bed by now if they've got to move on. Ah, Jove, Holmes, that coffin was almost swimming in chloroform. They meant to make sure. Well, perhaps now this poor little old workhouse lady can have her funeral after all. She's probably been mixed up in more dramatics after her death than in the whole of her life. At least she'll have her coffin to herself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she looks quite lost in it. That, my dear Watson, is an observation I devoutly wish you'd made when friend Peters first showed her to us the other day. Well, you saw her too, Holmes. Yes. This over-large coffin for this tiny, wasted old woman. Specially ordered, you mean, to leave room for Lady Carfax's body, too? Exactly. Of all the cold-blooded fiends I ever heard of. Fiendish. But very, very clever. Quite new in the annals of crime, I should say. It's too much to expect, I suppose, that they'll escape the hands of our Scotland Yard friends. What? Such brilliant originality could keep us happily engaged for years to come, my dear one. of Lady Frances Carfax was one of the Sherlock Holmes stories from the inspired pen of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. My name, my uh, real name is Norman Shelley. My friend Carlton Hobbs played Sherlock Holmes and I was Dr. Watson. And Michael Hardwick wrote our script for this piece.